What do the rich buy that the poor don't even know is available for purchase? Kidnapping insurance. Can confirm. I worked for a place where the CEO was very hands-on and would oftentimes fly to countries that were less than stable to sell the product. In case of kidnapping we had insurance for him. For anyone else that traveled with him that might get grabbed. And contingency plans in place for what we needed to be doing and who to contact in case this happens. Private jet timeshares. For those not quite rich enough for their own private jet. Or those rich people wanting to be a bit frugal. A really rich motto, if it fly. Floats or duck. You rent it. Edit, no. I haven't seen ballers. It's a very old saying, drive wasn't in it when I heard it. But it makes sense I guess. I was a mechanic for a while and one of the guys used to always say this. Time. All that crap you do, commuting. Grocery shopping. Cooking. Cleaning your house. Waiting on hold. Paying bills, all those chunks of your life that are eaten up by minutia, rich people buy out of all that routine garbage. Time is all you really get in your life. Rich people buy it back. This is the answer. No need to scroll. Even Warren Buffett and Bill Gates do whatever they can to get back time. The only commodity that is finite. Something they do that most people don't know about is buy entire libraries at once. My sister used to work at a bookstore and told me someone came in and wanted to furnish their library with a library-size purchase of books. They just wanted cherry-picked bestsellers left to the discretion of the people working there. It sounded wild. Edit, this place is a wealth of knowledge. And I'm here for it. Had no idea you could buy books by the foot. What a bizarre idea. Some wealthy people also buy books as decoration, with no intent of reading most of them. They buy books from wholesalers by the linear foot specifying how the books look on the shelves size color material of spine etc without any regard for what the books actually are they just need to fill wall space in library office rooms in their homes that sounds so sad how can you buy a book and not read it if you're willing to fork out thirty-five thousand dollars for the player and five hundred dollars per showing you can watch films that are currently in theaters in your own private home theater LifeWire.com. Wow who would have thought a private showing is only twice as much as a normal movie ticket. Landing 747s in small airports. I grew up around Lexington. K.Y. The region is huge on horses. Particularly thoroughbred horses. The entire city is surrounded by horse farms. And these farms breed some of the best racing horses in the world. The rich and famous will often come here to buy thoroughbreds to add to their breeding stock. One such person is a sheik from Dubai, I think, who owns his own private 747. Now the local airport isn't rated for 747s, and it's not legal to land one there unless it's an emergency. The sheik doesn't care though and lands his 747 there anyways. The airport fines him every time he does this, which he is totally fine with paying. I've been told that many of the upgrades to the airport over the years were almost entirely funded with money from those fines. In London rich people figured out it was cheaper to just park on the streets illegally and just pay the fines every day than to pay for parking in the city. So the city started clamping cars. So the rich people started paying people to go and pay the fine for the car to be unclamped before they wanted to leave. Underage six parties on private islands. Don't forget. Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide. S. If you were surprised by his suicide. Imagine how surprised he was. Private boarding gate at certain airports. Complete with showers, spa, full bar, lounge, food, a bed, gym, sauna etc. Total privacy. Your luggage is scanned and taken through security by a concierge. And you're driven to the plane in a BMW 8 series. LAX has them now. Hello. Yes. I would like to order some wealthiness just so I can have access to the private boarding gate. Yes. All hold. Thank you. ETA, asterisk shut up. You guys. I'm on the phone, asterisk, and thanks for the silver and the chuckles. Specialized household staff. When someone is truly mega rich. Running their household takes the same complexity as running a small to mid-sized company. And management is skilled and compensated accordingly. Don't think butler, think head of operations at a luxury hotel. The staff that household managers oversee can be really specialized as well. For example, 
Larry Ellison has his own personal curator to oversee his collection of Asian art. They do things like Asterisk advise on the purchase and sale of art in his collection. Asterisk oversee storage and display of art housed on his property. Asterisk oversee process of lending art for storage and display at museums. The curator will often have their own staff to conduct actual conservation work. Art transport. Art installation. Etc. So if you've already got an in-house crew of seven people focused on your art collection alone. Imagine how big your entire household staff is. That's why you've got a household manager. One of my friends comes from a super wealthy family. We stopped by her parents' house and of course it's a mansion with a full staff. The lead maid took one look at me and guessed my size. From there she laid out several outfits that had been bought but not worn for me to take home. It was surreal. Everyone knows about mega yachts. But the very rich also enjoy their own trains. Or at the very least private super luxurious train cars. With their budgets it isn't expensive to rent space on freight lines and an engine. Assuming they don't own their own. Sometimes a group of friends will hook their private cars together and motor around a continent having a big party. Now I am imagining some fat cat in his luxury train car between a bunch of loads of coal and some hobos in an empty boxcar. Pet cloning. Ex-boss was getting his dog cloned for $100,000. Oh. I've heard of this. There's a company in Texas that does it kinda regularly apparently now. $25,000 for a cat. $50,000 for a dog. It's something like a $1.2k deposit just for them to send your vet the kit to obtain bio samples and to store the material. You pay the rest of it whenever you're ready to clone your critter. Edit, the company is called Via Gen if anyone's curious. Thank you you, relative scale. See I just don't get this. Had a friend whose super wealthy parents did this. Guess what? Different temperament and everything, because it's still its own animal. They thought they were getting another one of their precious snuggle baby and this one hates to snuggle and gets into everything mischievous. No thanks. Ill always adopt. Best dogs I've ever had have been adoptions. Luxury Ice Cubes. Glacé Luxury Ice Co. produces perfectly square ice blocks for minimum dilution and maximum cooling. Hand carved and completely clear. These cubes are sold in bags of 50 and each bag costs $325. That's some BS. How much a drink is cooled depends on how large of a surface area the ice cube has and is correlated to the rate at which the ice cube melts and thus dilutes the drink. Either you get minimum dilution by using spherical ice cubes or maximum cooling by maximizing surface area. Both at the same time is just not a thing. Entire floors of hotels or multiple floors. Entire restaurants. Chefs from literally any restaurant in the world to cook for them wherever they are. I saw all of those things done by a prince of Saudi Arabia, we estimated it cost him $50,000 just for the one private meal in our restaurant. Given that he, one, had the top four floors of our hotel booked for the hundreds of staff to take care of him, his wife and his two kids, plus likely some concubines. If I'm being honest, as someone in this part of the world, being rich equals the number of people who work for you. Two. He paid $30,000 just to close our restaurant for one meal. 3. Flew his favorite chef from New York to Orlando to cook for him. On his private jet, and then back again. Of course. It was likely the other private jet he had just for his staff. Not for himself or his family. 4. Make food our entire staff. All the kitchen staff. All the federal. State and local security and him. His wife and his two kids. I have posted the entire story somewhere else in the past. But I couldn't find it easily. I had a buddy who taught ski lessons to another Saudi prince's little kid and had some nearly unbelievable and yet similar details during his interactions with them. That kid had an entire team around him or probably 10 staff. Plus vehicles, snowmobiles, a helicopter, and so on. I later met a guy who worked on an ultra-luxury 300-foot yacht and served Bill Gates and his wife among other super rich people. Their primary job was to operate without interacting with them. Or at least as little as possible. This shows you, in some sense, that having people around you doing stuff you need to be done but doing it invisibly is another perk of being rich. Edit added some details and additional stuff. A billionaire spending $50,000 a night. Every day of the week. 
for an entire year, is about the same ratio as a guy with $1,000 in the bank spending $18 over the course of a year. Or 20-ish cents a night. Edit, uh, $73 over a year. Sorry I was slightly intoxicated and tired when I wrote that. Point still stands. Though. I had a buddy who hired a driver. Got him to get a chauffeur's license. And then made sure his Jaguar was long enough to meet criteria as a limo. And then he could legally drink in the backseat. When I traveled with him internationally. Someone met us at the door when we were dropped off. And they walked us to our plane. None of that customs security stuff occurred. In Iowa your vehicle doesn't have to meet length requirements. My husband worked with a guy whose wife got her chauffeur's license so he could drink in the back seat of their sedan. Private performances with big name artists. I was on a yacht in the Virgin Islands and some mega yacht owner pretty close to us had Christina Aguilara flown in to perform for his guest on the mega yacht. We were close enough to see the performance, not close enough to pretend to be part of the party. I saw an interview with Penn from Penn and Teller talk about doing a private show on a yacht for one of the Microsoft guys. They paid to shut down their Vegas show for a week. Flew Penn Teller and their crew to Asia put them up for a week on a luxury yacht and had them do one show for their friends. There was a couple of big name bands on this cruise as well. Wasn't it Paul Allen and he died after booking but his friend's family said to come on down and do the show anyway? A Platinum Retriever. And here I am with my bronze retriever. A person to go to jail for you in your stead. This is a known phenomenon in Latin America but I imagine it happens in other places as well. Certainly amongst the Yakuza it happens. I knew a guy who did 8 years for his boss and got paid. You can buy houses ready to move in only with a suitcase. These house are more than fully equipped. Everything is already there like the whole furniture. Glasses. Knives. Forks. Spoons, tissues and toilet paper, towels, toys and games for the children etc. But Shaq literally had to spend 70,000 United States dollars in the middle of the night at Walmart to get his new dig furnished. I don't know. If you were rich, you could afford a person to fix that. Unique items. Occasionally you see in the news stuff like hat used in some popular movie auction for $80,000 or 5,000 year old Egyptian statue auction for $2 million and I think what kind of auction do you even go to buy that kind of thing? Like who do you have to be to even be in the know about these auctions? Standalone ice machines. These are under counter appliances whose sole purpose is to make ice. And not just any ice. The cheaper $2,000 plus ones make normal crescent shaped cubes. The more expensive one, $3,000 plus, make clear ice, in cube shapes. And then pellet ice makers, $4,000 plus, which is the chewable ice like Sonic has. These are the more entry-level models to boot. Some break five digits. I used to work for a manufacturer of these and at some point a lady was arguing with me because we were shipping a replacement part ground instead of next day air and she made a snide comment about if it were my ice machine she'd bet it wouldn't take this long. I told her. Ma'am, I don't have an ice machine. She snapped back all proud like she'd cornered me with. Then how do you get ice? I told her from an ice tray and she replied with. Well I don't have to do that. Yeah well for the next 3 to 5 business days you do itch. I do not miss that job at all. Pro tip for those who like Sonic Ice but are short $4,000. You can buy it by the 10 pounds bag at Sonic for $1.99 plus tax. I'm not rich but due to the fact that my dad was a top level gov official and I went to a very elite private boarding school. I hung out with some fabulously wealthy kids, i.e. rich parents. What surprised me is what a portion of very rich people don't buy, I noticed that a surprising percentage of very wealthy people don't buy super fancy cars. For example one family who owned a world famous beverage company all drove around in nondescript SUVs or minivans. Some rich people are extremely flashy but others are almost manic about not being seen as crass. And to those people, a supercar is crass but apparently having a $10 million home in Palm Beach is not crass face with rolling eyes. Money talks. Wealth whispers. Carrot edit thanks kind stranger. Poor people. This is basically how Dubai was built almost overnight. You think your platinum card is cutting it? Please. Centurion is the way to go. 
It'll cost 10 grand just to get one initial fee to join and the first annual fee. But you get everything. The Crystal Method are playing a local venue and you want to go backstage and shoot the sheet with Scott Kirkland because you're interested in donating to his favorite causes because you've always admired the guy. His political opinions. And his music? That can be arranged. Want a table at Schwa in Chicago? E in Vegas? Schloss Schauenstein in Furstenau? Or Aragawa in Tokyo? They'll get you in tomorrow. Need a full itinerary plan for a week in Paris? Need that new iPhone on day one but don't want to stand in line? Want to stay at the most luxurious place in Ibiza for the days Pete Tong is at the Blue Marlin? They do this in their sleep. It's a butler and concierge and local expert and best friend that knows a guy you'll ever meet. All just a call away. You get all this with Platinum Amex. The concierge team, at least in the UK, are phenomenal. I have a centurion and I'm in the US and I haven't noticed any difference with the concierge versus the platinum. It's sold how op stated, get in anywhere, but I haven't found any extra success versus just booking it myself through other channels, knowing the right people. A while back some guy on here was talking about his experience working as a sort of personnel manager for a billionaire and how things are just wildly different for them. The specific example he used was how things work when these people want to go on a trip and give any notice at all to their employees. What happens is that an advanced team gets sent ahead by a few days to scope out the rented bot location and report back exact dimensions for closet space, drawer space, etc. People back at the home go through the clothing, jewelry, etc. and draw up a priority list which is sent to the advanced team. The advanced team then spends the next two days purchasing the list of items. Entire wardrobes, jewelry sets, makeup kits, bathing supplies, etc. Anything they cannot get not enough time. Or as one of a kind like the family heirloom watch the rich dude wears every now and then, is relayed to the house team. The family's schedule is arranged such that the moment the family leaves the house on the day of travel, a whole team of people rushes through and packs up all the remaining items only after the family leaves. You wouldn't want to deny them access to their items for even a few seconds which are then sent ahead to the airport while the family has a lunch or something somewhere. Upon landing, their luggage takes one route direct and the family takes a similarly indirect route unless otherwise directed such that by the time they get to the location all of their items are not just unpacked but in their proper organized locations and ready for use without any of the advanced team ever being visible to the family. What happens when the family leaves the location? The same situation in reverse. But quite frequently all of the repurchased items are just disposed of in some method. It's just easier, if not cheaper, to rebuy them each time the family goes somewhere if they aren't traveling to too many different locations in quick succession.